Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Newman Chu, and I'm here to introduce the business analytics specialization offered by the Nanyang Business School at NTU. So these two words, business analytics, I guess the first word should be quite familiar, so I don't need to introduce, define what is business, but perhaps the more interesting is the second word, analytics. So let me start by first defining what we mean by analytics. What is analytics? So here's a definition that I like the best. Huh? Um, so you'll see many different um, websites, textbook, they will have a different definition for analytics. So here is a definition from this organization called INFORMS, uh, which defines analytics as the scientific process of transforming data into insights for the purpose of making better decisions. Um, the reason why I like this definition is in addition to telling you what analytics do, right? They also tell you what is the purpose of analytics. Uh, and I guess this definition fits very well for business school because ultimately at the end, it's not about the sophistication of the algorithms. It's not about how complex the mathematical equations are, but at the end of the day, it's about how you use the technology, the analytics to solve business problem. So I guess this is why what makes analytics at business school special. So here's a question that um, for you. What do the following organizations and individuals have in common? So here I have deliberately selected just uh, six uh, entities. It doesn't mean that this is the only six entities in the world uh, that does this, but I'm just selecting six. So on the top left, you have uh, Netflix, then Spotify, and then in Singapore, DBS Bank, US former, former president, uh, Grab, and of course, our tax authority in Singapore, IRAS. What do they have in common? Okay, the answer, uh, of course, quite obviously ties in with the nature of the talk today. They all use analytics and they all use analytics critically to achieve their success in their work. Okay, so that is the key point. So next, I'd like to um, discuss what's the difference between analysis versus analytics. Uh, because typically we will do some analysis first before we proceed on to do analytics. So there is a distinction uh, between these two um, terminology. So in analysis, it's mainly for the purpose of reporting. So reporting about past performance, reporting what has happened, what has already happened, right? when it happened, and then trying to figure out why it happened and so on and so forth. So it's all about the past, the, his, the history, the historical past. So to describe and to explain what had happened, how it happened, why it happened, we typically depends on uh, simple statistics. You build things like uh, the average, the proportion, the ratios, uh, simple charts such as your scatter plots, uh, bar charts, whatever. Right? So these are the very um, simple and easy to understand um, methods and uh, the techniques we use to explain the past. So some examples of the questions that we will answer in analysis. How many persons were infected by the disease X last month? Okay. Uh, among those who are granted our bank loan last year, who did not pay back in full, including interest? Okay. So notice that these are questions that can be easily answered if you have the historical data. Okay. In contrast, how would analytics, what's the difference with analytics? Huh? So mainly for the purpose of planning planning meaning for the future, okay? So what will most likely occur or happen in the future, most likely? Um, so to do that, we need to rely on more advanced uh, stats and more advanced models and techniques to be able to do some forecasting or prediction, okay? Examples of those questions that we will ask um, in analytics, how many persons will likely be infected with disease X next month if we do nothing? or if we do social distancing, or if we close down the airport, et cetera, et cetera. So these are the various scenarios that we can run using our models to get a prediction about what's going to happen, what's likely to happen, okay? And in terms of banks, this person applied for bank loan today, how likely will he be able to pay up in full? Okay. Can you see the distinction between these two type of questions? Okay. And can you see how it affects you? Okay. 
Imagine you applying for a bank loan because you want to buy a new flat. So you submit your application. Okay, so the bank will assess based on the information what is your risk, your credit risk. If it's, if it's acceptable, they will grant you the loan. If not, they will reject the loan and you won't be able to pay for the new flat. Okay, so this is how uh, influential or how important all these analytics techniques are and it, has, it had already happened. So this is a, a true case reported in the New York Times in the year 2013. There is a judge when sentencing Mr. Eric Lomis to six years jail. The judge reportedly says he arrived at his sentencing decision right, in part because of Mr. Lomis' ratings in the Compass Analytics report that says he will have a high likelihood of committing another crime. So that's why, partially because of the information provided by analytics, the judge sentenced him to six years jail. Okay. So this was reported in the New York Times. And of course, later on in the US, there are some debates going about the fairness of the algorithm, the transparency of the algorithm, uh, because this Compass algorithm is a proprietary software developed by a private company, for-profit company. So there are some uh, um, public uh, debates going on. Eh? So in Singapore case, in you know, Singapore government, um, uh, IRAS, uh, these are the two news uh, press release. So the first is in August 2016, IRAS told us they are investigating 43 individuals huh, suspected for committing uh, tax fraud on GST. Okay. Um, and in 2019 Straits Times, IRAS told us that they actually use and they pick the companies and individuals for audit huh, because there are so many tax returns, right? How did they identify the, the shortlist? Using data analytics to identify those at risk of non-compliance or high risk of tax evasion. So um, we are familiar with this case because my previous company was the one who designed uh, one of the solutions to help them to identify potential tax evasions. So in case you are saying, you're thinking that tax is something that you have not, you have not uh, and you won't ever commit such a, such a, such a thing, how about uh, hospital, okay, A and E? Do you realize that analytics actually help the nurses at the a &E determine whether you, when you come to the a &E hospital, whether you must see the doctor now or within 15 minutes, or you can wait two hours or longer to see the doctor. So based on the symptoms, the nurse, unless it's a very clear cut symptoms, the nurse will enter the, the symptoms into the computer. There's an analytics algorithm going on behind the scene and they'll churn out a risk score and they'll put you in one of the five categories. So based on the, the scoring system by the uh, analytics model. Okay, so there are a lot of different uh, models. Also in the US, they will use the emergency severity index to calculate how serious you are in when you are presented with those symptoms in the emergency room. Okay, so this is an example of the different levels, like the five different levels that the models predict, and therefore some of the the so-called uh, how long you can wait right, to see the doctors. So this was published, uh, I guess, and used in Australia, New Zealand, and in Canada. So I guess in Singapore case, for the non-urgent, uh, it may even be more than 130 minutes huh, for public, public hospital. So that's how uh, widespread analytics are and how it actually affects uh, so many people. So just now to talk about bank loan, this is one of the uh, uh, very common example. All the banks, right, uh, to a different extent, they will use some risk scoring system so to assess whether they want to grant you the loan or not. Okay, so this is a very, very common application. Same for insurance, insurance premium, right? If you want to purchase insurance, they will assess your information, assess your risk before they decide to charge how much premium and whether to even uh, want to insure you or not. So just now we talk about all the examples uh, about analytics, mainly from the risk perspective, right? So in addition to the risk perspective, uh, quite common, uh, um, uh, companies also use analytics as the strategy to pursue higher revenue, higher profit. One classic textbook example is Netflix. 
So I remember I first uh, presented Netflix case in Singapore more than 10 years ago. And at the time when I asked my workshop participants, uh, um, uh, do you know who, who or what is Netflix? Nobody raised hand. Huh? I guess nowadays everyone knows uh, who is Netflix, what is Netflix and what do they do, right? Basically, it's the online streaming movies and, 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 and shows, right? That you can watch by paying a subscription. So... Um, so this is a textbook case because they primarily depend on their analytics model to recommend the right movies to the right person. Okay? And in fact, this is so critical right, to their survival that they offer a $1 million prize. Okay? In 2006, they offer $1 million US prize to anyone in the world who can improve their prediction algorithm by at least 10%. The first team to do that will win $1 million. Of course, at the end, you, uh, uh, you, you must show them how, how your algorithm works so that they can incorporate that into their movie recommendation system. Okay? So it took three years. Huh? In the year 2009, finally, there's a team who developed an ensemble analytics model that combines different models to give a better prediction that, is, that exceeds the threshold of 10%. Okay? So when you come to my analytics class, we will have a more detailed discussion about this case study. Why 10%? What is the evaluation criteria to show that your algorithm actually works rather than just based on luck, just based on the random data set? So we'll discuss this in more depth when you attend and if you attend my class. Okay, so this is another case uh, closer to us in Singapore. Um, so this is a press release, DBS Bank saves millions per year by using analytics in operations. So I guess in this press release photo, uh, the man in pink, I don't have to introduce, you probably know who he is. So the man in the black suit who received the, the prize right from the, our prime minister. So he is actually uh, our very good friend because we, after we deliver this project, um, there is so so great a success, and that he asks us to come back every almost every year, right, to discuss and 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 brainstorm on other analytics project we can do for uh, DBS operations. So this is a, a very uh, uh, close at home uh, case study because our team is the one again who designed the analytics solution for them. Okay. So again, if you come to my class, I will give you share uh, more information right, and about what happened during the, the case and what we did that actually generated the million dollar savings right, for DBS Bank. So in terms of the demand, right, the market demand, there's a huge demand and not enough professionals, the, the, the truth is, especially experienced professionals. So the government agencies have sent um, uh, this signal right, very clearly. They tell us that data analytics is a critical uh, sector in the economy, projected to, be, to contribute at least $1 billion each year, and so on and so forth. So that's why so many universities are offering uh, analytics courses, right? because we have so much demand, insufficient supply. This is another release, press release from a, a international global recruiter, headhunting company, Robert Waters, that tells you that the top jobs will be in data science, analytics, and so on in Singapore. Okay, for the uh, foreseeable future, even this, even though it's 2019, it's still very much uh, 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 present. So um, how do, where will you learn business analytics, right? Uh, this specialization in MBS. So in MBS, we actually offer uh, three programs, the single degree bachelor in business, which you can complete in three years. Uh, that has the option in uh, business analytics, uh, which you can choose after the end of the first year. Okay. We also offer a double degree for those who want to learn both accounting and business. So within the business itself, then you can select business analytics as a specialization. So a third popular choice is a double degree, right? Between two different schools, one from uh, business school uh, and the other degree from the computer science or engineering, right? So that these students will be uh, very strong in both programming and also in the analytics. So that is the third possibility of pursuing business analytics. So the double degrees will have to take about four years, huh? four years to, to complete, the, on average, four years to complete, whereas single degree is uh, three years. 
So what is special right, about uh, business analytics in MBS? Okay? So uh, we take a very uh, contemporary modern view. Um, instead of just the traditional analytics, what, what business school define analytics, we also incorporate uh, the latest ideas, some of the latest ideas and the, and the wonderful uh, concepts right, from statistics, from computer science uh, and combine. Right? So there are different topics uh, available even in the course right, that actually deals with AI, with data science, machine learning, and we ground them all in business application. So to show clearly how it helps the business and to be able to communicate those AI, machine learning, analytics ideas to your audience. Okay, so this is a very important part. The soft, soft skills, right, the communication part is actually also critical. So this is our, um, one view of our modern business analysis curriculum. So we start from the core modules, right? So all students who subscribe, who go under our business analytics specialization, they must complete three core modules about databases, analytics one, whereby you start the foundation for analytics, and then analytics two, we cover more advanced techniques. So these three will form the core for uh, business analytics specialization. And then you have a choice to select your elective, depending on your interest, depending on your uh, potential career in the future, you will select uh, three, at least three, right, from electives from a list available. So things like AI and accounting and finance, things like business analytics consulting, uh, things like financial services, supply chain, and we recently just launched a new elective called the Programming for Business Transformation, right? This programming course, new programming course is designed to enhance your programming skills so that you are more confident when you take on more programming kind of jobs because analytics is so widely applicable that there's so much different job roles, right? And different job roles in analytics actually require different levels of skills in programming, okay? So if you're talking about consulting, depending on what roles in consulting you're doing, if you're more client-facing, uh, a pre-sales kind of job, then there is uh, little to no programming required. Whereas if you're in the professional services, you're implementing the analytic solution for the client, then there will be some programming involved. So, so, there, are, so there are different levels of programming requirement eh, depending on your jobs in analytics. So, so you will select the elective, right? That, uh, that is your interest and that you want to perform, right? That you want to use in your future career. So in terms of, the, so that's for the courses, right? So in terms of the technologies, we will expose you to the different programming language, different uh, popular systems used in, in the industry, things like Python, R, SAP, SAS, Trader, X system, deep learning uh, frameworks like Keras and uh, TensorFlow, uh, Big Data, Hadoop Spark, visualization software such as your Tableau, Power BI, and of course, different databases, the, my, uh, the MySQL, uh, and also other non-SQL uh, databases. Uh, and then we'll supplement that by giving you the work experience while you are a student. So in terms of work experience, we uh, routinely get projects from industry. So right now I'm actually working on another industry project and I recruited uh, five students from our BA specialization to work on these industry paid projects over 10 months. So they'll, they'll do this as part of their work study scheme. So this is the current project that, that uh, I'm, I'm engaged in together with my BA students. So we also have a professional internship, I call it professional attachment that lasts 10 weeks. And for those who wanted a longer and deeper uh, work experience, uh, that we have a work study scheme that will cover at least 36 weeks, right? So mainly using the holidays, right? To, 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 to acquire the hours. So here is the results from the latest uh, graduate employment survey for uh, business analytics. Huh? In, uh, so it is 2019 to business analytics, only business analytics. So uh, based on the survey results from the graduates, uh, we found that our graduates in 2019 BA are hired across 16 different industries. So this tells you how applicable your skills are, right? Across 16 different industries. So the top three industries that account for 53% of the total employment are the finance and insurance, 
public administration, meaning the public service, the government sector, and of course, uh, business and management consulting. So these are the top three uh, employment sectors. Okay. In terms of the top 10 job positions, so these are the top 10 uh, statistics, data analyst, software developer, uh, management trainee, uh, system designer, financial analyst, management consultant, business consultant, uh, financial accounting manager, IT project manager, operations officer. So these are the top 10 job positions that account for 78% of the employment of the BA students. Okay. Next, in terms of the pay, right? Um, so this is a, a survey and uh, the minimum pay was about 2,800. The maximum pay was reported to be 8,800. So I guess 8,800 is quite a, a nice pay right, for a fresh graduate okay, from MBA. Okay, so the median is 3,800 plus, right? almost 3,900. That's the median, meaning 50% be less than this, 50% above that. Okay? So the clustering, right? if you exclude outliers, it will be typically the range will be between 3,000 to 5,500 for a BA fresh graduate. So that is the, uh, the based on results of our latest employment survey. So it's actually not bad. Okay. So uh, to give an illustration of how we analyze the data, of course, must start with some data, right? So this is a data set uh, that I get from somewhere, um, anonymized data set. So these are the information about the different insurance claims uh, for vehicle, uh, uh, motor insurance claims. So this is a data sample. Uh, so they got things such as the month, the, uh, the week of the month, day of the week, the accident area coded, so that you don't know what actual location, they just have a code, so they, they preserve some uh, some information, right? Uh, some, uh, and anonymize it. So, uh, and things like marital status, the age, whose fault is it? So it's coded again, uh, policy type coded again, and, and so on and so forth. So all together in this data set is a CSV file, comma separated values. There are actually 5,175 cases, uh, and 33 columns, so 33 variables, we call it. Huh? So in, when you inspect this data, you will discover that about 18% right, are the proven fraud cases. right? So they are, these are the people that uh, are, have submitted fraudulent claims to try to cheat the money from the insurance company. So the question then for analytics is, among all these 33 variables, right, 33 attributes of, of each and every claim, what are those attributes that are, are significant right, in terms of uh, high chance of fraud? That's the idea, right? So that's the objective. Can we identify which combination among the 33 attributes will form a high risk factors for fraud? So that if we know, then we can use this as a filtering right, mechanism. In future, when the insurance company receives a fraud claim, they'll check against the high risk factors, see whether they are present or not. So if there are high risk factors are present, they can prioritize it as investigation, right? So you carry out more detailed uh, investigation uh, for those high risk cases. Uh, so that they can um, they therefore prioritize their investigation. So the plan is, so to do this uh, using analytics, we of course need a software, right? We are, uh, in our case, we'll be using a, there are a lot of software for doing analytics, executing analytics. So in our course, we typically use R and Python, right? So for, for this example, I have actually executed using the free open source software called R. And again, don't worry about you not knowing the software, we will teach you right, how to use whatever software that you need for the course so that you can use it in industry. And R is not, even though it's free open source, it doesn't mean that uh, it's only academic. Eh? So maybe at the beginning, once upon a time it was, but nowadays it's not. Eh? Python and R are very, very common um, technologies be in use in industry. Example, in DBS, very often they will also ask me to go, uh, they will also consult me on some of the, the R programs, right? Because they have a division that specializes in using R to execute uh, their, their, some of the analytics for DBS Bank. Um, if you have a chance to go to Accenture, which is one of the top four or five uh, consult, uh, consulting um, um, and accounting auditing company, if you go to their, um, the office, right, um, in uh, in City Hall, when you step in the office, you will, you're presented with a gallery right, of monitors whereby they showcase all the analytics work that Accenture do using R software. So these are some of the very important and very useful tools in use by industry, okay? 
So the plan is we're going to have to read in the data first, uh, read, uh, let the software read in the data, and then you will need to prepare the data for before you can do analytics, right? So one of the common things that I will teach you and I will remind students to do this is please always check your data type, right? Make sure that they are of the correct data types. If not correct, please convert it to the correct data type before you do the analytics. This is because in the subsequent analytics downstream, some of the techniques will actually exploit, use the information about the data type to do some default uh, techniques, uh, do some default calculations. So if your data is of the wrong type, you will not be able to get the correct results. So this is a very important data preparation step, uh, uh, which is very important for, for uh, students to understand. Uh, and, and, okay? So, and there are so many analytics techniques, right? We teach a broad range, right? Um, the standard linear regression, the standard logistic regression, before we move on to more sophisticated machine learning techniques such as uh, CART, classification regression trees. And uh, right now I'm teaching a random forest in the advanced course. Uh, and my colleagues in the AI, in finance and accounting, they teach deep learning, right? So all these are the different levels of method that we can use right, uh, for the same kind of problem. So for this illustration, uh, I have used logistic regression, but not just a standard logistic regression, we will automate it. So we'll automate the search for the high risk factors by using backward elimination. So all this can be done automatically, right? Uh, so that the algorithm can search through all the 5,000 plus data points, all the day three variables to identify for you automatically the combination of high risk factors. Okay. So these are the results. Unfortunately, I can't show you the, the process, right? Uh, probably in my class in the seminar, I can show you right, how it works uh, to give you a, a, a sense of how we execute analytics in, in, in the class. Okay, so these are the final results. So after searching through all the 33 variables and 5,000 plus data points automatically, they have identified 15 variables, right? And that the top four risk factors in this data set are, number one, the, the, the faulting party, right? whose party is at fault, the policy type, number three, the vehicle category, number four, the address change claim. So this is an indicator whereby the policyholder has recently changed their address. Okay, so that is a uh, that was picked up as a high risk factor. It's one of the four high risk factors that is uh, suggestive of fraud. Okay, so so that was the example uh, high level. So now let's come back, right? So why choose MBS Business Analytics Specialization, right? So what is so special? So let's do a summary again. Uh, modern syllabus, we include topics not just in the traditional analytics, we include topics in data science, in machine learning, in AI, artificial intelligence. And these are taught by professors with uh, industry working experience. So it, uh, it's not just academic theory, but we will show you, right? Uh, what to take note of when you apply those techniques in the real world and what are some of the, uh, what things are considered um, important by the industry, which is seldom mentioned in academic textbooks. Okay, so in other words, we know what your future employee is looking for. Huh? Okay, so uh, for our single degree, it can be done in three years. Double degree, of course, four years, but you get two degrees instead of one, and you will learn highly valued job skills, right? That combines right, and integrates business, data, IT, and, and stats. So along the way, we will train you in both the hard skills and equally important, right, the soft skills, right? You need to be able to not just do analytics, you need to be able to get the results and convince, right, your audience, whether they are your employer, your future employer, or your clients or customers, that this is the correct plan of action. This is the best plan of action. And this action plan is derived from the analytics results. So your ability to convince right, is important, okay? To, to communicate is important, okay? Not just being able to do, solve it, the, the analytics. So uh, what kind of students would be a natural fit for business analytics, right? Um, um, uh, especially since there are so many options available, right? So uh, from my own personal uh, perspective, these are the, the, the two traits, right? That uh, naturally fit analytics, right? Number one, uh, do you love to analyze data? Okay, 
So how do you know whether you love the analyzed data or not, right? So you can't just, uh, just assume or say that I love data. So one way to find out is whether you enjoy learning new techniques to analyze data. Do you enjoy that? The joy, right? When you heard of this new technique, are you excited? Are you happy trying to figure out how it works? So you have that curiosity, that natural, that natural desire to learn, right? And enjoy learning new techniques, right? To analyze data. So that is the clear evidence that you actually love to analyze data. Okay, not just because you want to pass the exam, you want to score A, but because there is this internal joy from analyzing, from learning new techniques to analyze data. So that is the, the trait that will make you very suitable to do analytics work. Okay. The secondly, of course, your inclination, right? When you make business decision, do you prefer to base it on data and scientific reproducible analysis instead of just your just a convenient shortcuts or just based on experience? Uh, so this is uh, another trait uh, about your preference for decision making that will make you a natural fit to in business analytics. So, and if you are, then we welcome you uh, um, and we will train you to use modern analytics, which combines machine learning and AI techniques. We will train you to convince the audience of the results, how to convince audience of results and, uh, the, and the recommended plan of action right, for your based on the analytics. And we will also train you to see beyond the numbers. Huh? and know what are the limitations of the techniques, the limitations of the existing data set, and what are some of the tricks right, some people may use right, to try to convince you of a, their recommended plan action. You'll see through their tricks because you know what are the limitations, you know that they should have considered that instead of this, and so on and so forth. You will know all this. And then, of course, you will also find out that there are some very common misconceptions. There are so many common misconceptions that uh, you, will, you will learn. Right? Uh, some common errors that, that people think. One simple example that I can think of offhand is the concept of correlation. So you probably have learned correlation from your previous stats course. So one of my favorite questions in class when I'm teaching linear regression is I typically start with correlation because it's such a popular metric, right? Uh, correlation is being reported in the news, Population is being uh, the correlation is being cited by government and by the, the business telling you that there's uh, this trend and that trend or no or no trend, whatever. So um, but it's actually not as straightforward as you think. Huh? Uh, so example, let me say, huh? so we know that correlation is mathematically between negative one to positive one. Huh? So just a number in between. So if the correlation result, the correlation number is close to one, 0 0.999, example. Okay. Does that mean that you have a straight line relationship between the X and the Y variable? Okay. Is there a straight line relationship if you have correlation close to one? Okay. Are you sure there's a straight line relationship? So we will, I will show you, right, that this is a very common misconception. Okay. Similarly, for correlation equals to zero or close to zero, does that mean there's no relationship between the X variable and the Y variable? Are you sure? Yeah, I will show you the proof, right? for this in my class. Okay. So these are two very common misconceptions just on correlation statistics alone. Okay. So we have learned right, from this uh, talk and some of the real stories and uh, events that analytics and AI had already changed the way we live and work in the hospital, in banks, when they submit loans, um, even tax, uh, and, and even in courts, right, criminal justice, and, and so on, so many different areas and affected everyone's life. Okay? So do you want to be able to influence the change or lead some of the change right, yourself in your future area of work? If you desire, if you want, and you have the, the, the natural inclination for business analytics kind of work, I will, will welcome you to join our specialization, our program, and I hope to see you in my class. Okay? That's all for my talk. Okay? So, um, if there's any questions, I guess there's one common question because of a new development in our programs, right? We are launching a new second major in entrepreneurship. So one of the FAQ, right, from a student would be a potential student is uh, how does entrepreneurship uh, apply, right, together with uh, BA, business analytics. And I can tell you that 
even though we, and you see a lot of huge success stories like in the big companies such as Netflix, in the courts, in IRAs, government agencies, banks, DBS banks, actually yeah, Netflix once upon a time is a very small startup. Okay? So it grew from a very small startup basing on analytics as their key corporate strategy, they grew it to become a big MNC today. Okay? So therefore, even if you don't think that you want to join big companies or government agencies and just want to either join a startup or start your own company as an entrepreneur, BA is an excellent choice, right? Because it gives you the valuable skill set you can use to deliver your unique product, your unique services, okay? And to disrupt the industry. Just like what Uber does, uh, what uh, Grab does, right? To the uh, ride industry. Okay, so I hope uh, for those who are interested in entrepreneurship, you will seriously consider BA as your business degree, whether it's a single degree or a double degree, even though the additional requirements for the additional second major in entrepreneurship may require you to spend one additional semester with us, but it is definitely worth it. So uh, in summary, BA applies, right? It's still useful, regardless of whether you want to join a big MNC, you want to join a government, or you want to go for NGO to do social good, or you want to start a company or join a startup, it is all equally useful and equally valuable. Okay, that's the that's the that's how uh, prevalent, how applicable, how relevant BA is, right? In the different industry sector, different kinds of jobs, different size of company. Okay, I hope that will clarify that student's question about the suitability of entrepreneurship as a second major for together with BA. Okay, thank you.